This video is about why bicyclists are forced to break the law. First of all, let me start by saying that everyone breaks the law. We're humans. We do things by accident. We do things on purpose. We do things because we're frustrated and in a rush. Everyone breaks the law. So let's get this out of the way. The first law that bicyclists break is stop signs. The stop is yield and the Idaho stop actually increases safety. And I have a video on the Idaho stop and why it increases safety. But statistics show that all the states that are implementing the Idaho stop have safer intersections and bicyclists have less injuries because of the Idaho stop. Now, the next thing that kind of comes out of that is red lights. There is a California vehicle code that requires the city to have bicycle infrastructure such that the car, the, the light will recognize the bicycle there and not have to wait for car. But there's many streets where I'll have to like kind of wave the car to come forward or I'll make a right turn and take another street. So there's many times where the light will just not change because of the bicycle. Chicago actually implemented some bicycle infrastructure and they showed that you can actually increase the right behaviors by actually having a system made for that mode of transportation. There's a thought. You know, the law says you have to be basically signaling the whole time. You have to hold your arm out the whole time, I guess. Because cars, remember, they just click the signal on and that's it, they leave it. But bicyclists have to actually stick their arm out and not have their hand on the bicycle. So you can't expect bicyclists to follow this law. This is yet another law that obviously was not written with bicyclists in mind. Another law that bicyclists will always break is going with the flow of traffic. Now, a lot of times I am going faster than car traffic, but also there are times where I'm going slower than car traffic. I'm very rarely going exactly the speed that cars are going. So actually that's another law that bicyclists will always break. Again, the vehicle code is just not written for bicycles. Another thing that I wanna to touch on here that really bugs me is e-bikes, electric bicycles have limiters they can't go past a certain wattage they can't go past a certain speed why are we limiting the thing that's not causing the death and injury to other people why are we not limiting cars why are cars allowed to go as fast as they want there's no good reason people say oh they have to be able to accelerate well a bicyclist and a pedestrian can't accelerate they're vulnerable we have to limit the cars i don't understand why electric bicycles have these limits yes they are putting themselves at risk Yes, they might be putting other people at risk, but the vast majority, by far, not even close, of death and injury is caused by cars. So I don't know why we're so worried about bicycles going fast. So you can't always expect a bicyclist to pull to the right, for example, to allow you to pass. It's just not always practical. If you bicycle commute, you will understand this a lot more than just by me telling you. Taking the lane is legal in many cases and in many states. You can watch my Bicycle in All 50 States video to see which state has a, a taking the lane law, but most of them have something. Because of visibility concerns or safety concerns, or just to discourage unsafe passing. When people say, oh, I see bicycles get away with stuff all the time. Well, number one, it might be for their safety and for the good of their health. And number two, they're not killing people when they're doing it. So just chill out. Maybe I need to chill out. What can we do? We can have bicycle infrastructure. We can have a bicycle interstate system. We have all these freeways that are cutting the city. We can easily build a bicycle 405, a bicycle 10, a bicycle 101. Ventura did it, San Diego did it, Chicago. All over the world, people have done it. There's bicycle, we have some bicycle freeways in Los Angeles too. We just aren't willing to invest in the, the interstate system. But it is so doable, it's so easy, the costs are so minimal compared to these massive public transit and car projects. Even if it is 1% of the population, which it would be much more if we had it, but even if it is stays at 1%, it still is far less than the cost that it would require. 1% of the budget of most transportation budgets is still more than enough to create this whole ecosystem of bicycle friendly roads. Let's just do it. Let's change the laws. Let's bring the Idaho stop in. Let's have the bicycle infrastructure. Let's make cities safe for everyone. Mm -hmm.